Hello everybody, we're back here with Minutes with Mint. This is episode number one of the official series. And our topic today is the zombie apocalypse. Now personally, I wish this would happen. I hate people as it is, that will be its own video. But I just, I really want it to happen because it would thin out the population quite a bit. And I, I have a decent feeling that I would survive, at least a little bit if not for the entire duration of the apocalypse. I have multiple contingency plans, believe it or not, for a zombie apocalypse. I have too much time on my hands, and I think of a lot of stuff. This is one of them specific things that I think about a lot. And I have a contingency plan, which is my main, that I actually somewhat loosely wrote about, in my one story. I think it's short story number... I think... I want to say three? So, I'll check that out. If I'm wrong, I will put some subtitles in saying which one it is, but for now. That is loosely based off of my contingency plan. So, my plan personally would be to go up to my lake house, I'd, I have guns, so I'd be covered on guns and ammunition. I might pick up a bow and some arrows at a sporting goods store or somewhere like that. Because that would be the smartest thing to use as a medium to long range weapon. Is a bow or crossbow, either or. And for a melee slash hand to hand combat weapon, I would probably use a machete. Or an axe. Not like a hatchet. Hatchet is better representation. So the reason I would use the machete is usually machetes have length. They're usually about 14, 15, 16 inches long. The blade anyway. And they are durable. At least most of them are durable from what I've seen. And they have a good hacking, slashing motion, where you could easily get to the skull of the enemy. Now, right now, I'm talking Walking Dead scenario. If you've ever seen that show, I don't know if it's just in the U.S. or if it's other places. But I'm going off of Walking Dead scenario, Walking Dead zombie type, and um, situation of that sort. Now... For medium to long range, like I said, bow would be ordeal, or ideal, rather. And, excuse me, or crossbow, because of simple, no noise, almost whatsoever. They're easy, they're light, they're compact, and most importantly, they're quiet. It doesn't take a lot of space up in, say, like a backpack or on you somewhere else for arrows or bolts. It's just a simple fact. For if I had to use a gun, I would use 12-gauge shotgun with a buck or buckshot or just birdshot. I think it's like D, I think, is the one I'm thinking of. I don't remember. I haven't shot in a in quite a while, but, um, I'd use that because it has so much stopping power behind the round, very bulky, very slow reload, and very heavy carrying all that ammo, but that's what I know, that's what I'm comfortable with, so that'd be my main if I had to bring a gun. Sidearm, I have no clue, I've never shot a sidearm of any kind, I don't know anything about them. So honestly, I'm I'm gonna leave that blank. I mean, I don't, I don't know anything about sidearms. But, um, hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons, like I said, machete or hatchet. Hatchet, because they have heft, especially if it's one that's solid with a wood handle, that has heft to it. If you swing that, it's gonna dig deep. It's not really a slashing weapon, but it does come down on whatever you're going after. So my plan 
is to go either up to my lake house. There, that town only has a population of around a thousand people. So it wouldn't be too bad to just go around because it's a heavily wooded area. Wouldn't be too bad to just go around the entire town and get to my lake house. But then if I couldn't go there, I would go to Lake Michigan. Now, I, like I said before, I'm in northern Illinois, so I live right by Lake Michigan. Well, if we're going on Walking Dead scenario, zombies can't swim. And they shouldn't be able to relatively any other scenario if we're talking about. So, what my big plan is, is to get on a boat and fish for food. That's, that's basically it. You would fish for food. Uh, cooking it would be a bit of a problem. I'm not 100% sure on that aspect of cooking. Rowing, I mean, or m movability, mov movability, I, I don't know the word for it, but moving wouldn't be a problem. It'd just use your oars or wind if you have a sailboat type type boat. And basically, if you still had bait, you would never have to go back to the mainland. You could just live on that boat. I mean, easy waste disposal. I mean, it sounds gross, but that's true. And it's just so much simpler than trying to dodge zombies and people on the like on the mainland. Rather than being confined... To a smaller space, but completely safe from any sort of enemy, really. The only thing you'd have to worry about is weather. So that is really my whole plan, is if this were to go down, I, would, I wouldn't take a car. Because going up there, you would have to mainly use highways. So, the smarter thing to do, in my opinion, was if you know how, to ride a horse up there. If you knew how to ride a horse, all you'd have to do is stop every, every few miles, give it a break, and then you could keep going. You don't have to worry about gas, all you have to worry about food. And even if we're talking gas, gas only lasts about a year before it goes bad. Excuse me. So, yeah, that's basically the whole thing for me. Is you go up there, you only have your limited supply of stuff. Like I said, machete or hatchet. That would be my main melee. Bow or crossbow, that'd be my main long range. If I had to bring a gun, it'd be a shotgun. But... That's really about it. Like I said again, stay on the water. You don't stay on the mainland. You get a boat, or even if you just have to make a raft, and you just stay out on the water for the duration of that scenario, that, that apocalypse. You just stay out there on the water. That way, like I said, you don't have any interference from zombies at all, all you'd have to worry about is people shooting at you from the shoreline. But then again, that is not smart, considering that the noise would draw zombies to them, forcing them into the water themselves. Now, if they can't swim, they're screwed. But if they can, they could come to your boat, but then again, that gives you a lot of time with them being um, defenseless, and you could easily take them out on their way to your boat. So, I think that's going to about do it for this video. Now, I'm thinking of making these more spaced apart, like maybe every three days, four days, so I don't run out of ideas right away. Because I, I, I love doing this, honestly. This is only my second one, but I really like it. So... Like I said before, if you want me to do a video on something, I have a shorter video of some of the stuff I'd be comfortable talking about, 
you just ask me any questions down in the comments of this video about one of those topics, and I will be sure to answer that question in that topics video. So I'm going to say this is the end here, and everybody stay minty.